so early Mesopotamian Persian Gulf Research Project is what I'm a part of. I work for the Uthid Museum as a programmer in the Babylonian section, and this is the project that I code stuff for. Steve Renette does ceramic analysis for the Alhibba project. Darren P. Ashby does work with the objects with Holly Pittman to try and do cross-references and do the stratigraphic analysis of the site of Alhibba and Or. So, next. Perfect. Do a brief outline of what I'm going to talk about pretty quickly. Kind of introduce the project very generically. Have a quick discussion on the difficulty of digitizing and updating legacy data how to link that disparate data and our own experiences attempting to do that. The solution we came up with, which we've called Terra, which stands for Toolkit for Archaeological Research and Analysis. And kind of go over quickly the database structure that I designed, then what it does, what it doesn't do, and then kind of what we're currently using it for now for analyses. So, Southern Mesopotamia, modern day Iraq, south of Baghdad, allowed complex societies to emerge through a diverse ecology of arable land surrounding a marshy riverine patchwork. Together with Uruk, the cities of Ur and Lagash, modern day Alhibba, were at the center of these developments. Access to open waters at the mouth of the Persian Gulf allowed the development of maritime trading, bringing much needed raw materials into resource poor southern Mesopotamia. By roughly 2000 BCE, there were huge merchant enterprises running out of the imperial capitals of Ur and Lagash, which imported vast quantities of copper, stone, hardwood materials from the Iranian plateau, the Yaman Peninsula, the Indus Valley, Central Asia. And it's all in exchange for these industrial produced goods in that area. So this project proposes to explore the nature of this symbiosis based on cooperation competition between these sites by setting these urban centers within their shared environmental niche at the mouth of the Persian Gulf. So at the heart of our effort is convincing other researchers, which would be everyone in this room, potentially, if you are interested by the end of this, to share both existing legacy data sets, any newer data that we have from the area, and combine it with what we have as well in the system that we've been designing. Um, so I was hired specifically to figure out how to do all this, which is problem solving, which is my favorite thing to do. So, kind of briefly, like the goals of the project base, or compared to the goals of the toolkit, we have to kind of solve the problem. So we need a publication platform for Alhiba, or like already has War Online, which is a pretty great functional website um, that's open to the public as well. We need something that was integrated with search, an integrated search or query with research <laughs> capabilities for both sites. So the Mesopotamia, Persian Gulf landscape archaeology capabilities, and Mesopotamian Persian Gulf Indian Ocean Maritime Trade Networks is what they're also interested in. So I have a toolkit, Terra, which is, it's not just a repository or another publishing platform, so it's a different kind of problem space, as we call it. So it's more targeted towards actually doing number crunching and research and analysis on the day it's when it, not just having it open for people to download and use. Um, so it can support like a stratigraphic analysis of various data. Lightweight but robust geospatial engine. It's open source, mutable structure to handle disparate legacy and non-legacy data. So, difficulty with legacy data sets. Working with legacy data is never easy. It may contain rich information, but extracting that data can pose problems. Converting it to a digital format makes this process all the more difficult. And even if a legacy data set was digitized in the past, digital technology and storage methods have changed over time. Often these past projects use bespoke solutions to organize their data, whether by spreadsheet or by paper. In the case of Alhiba, we're using the older fantastic FileMaker database that several people may or may not be familiar with. Although FileMaker can perform some fairly sophisticated queries, et cetera, exporting the data to something newer proved difficult. In fact, I had to write scripts to process a lot of the exported data just to get it working because how it kind of manipulates the spreadsheets or XML is quite odd and doesn't work for like doing a comma-separated um, value file. So when I was hired, we wanted to see if we could utilize the existing or online system, which is already an online kind of open source database. Unfortunately, we ran into some problems and I had to design something new, which leads me to kind of explain what worked and what didn't work with both existing systems. And so 
El Hippo was relational and organized quite well in a bespoke system designed in FileMaker. It was the focus of our project early on, however, because we wanted to move it out of that proprietary framework because FileMaker is very difficult to use, expand, etc. Had no public access to the data and suffered from limited exporting and sharing of data. Our online was open source, relational, semi-generic and structured. Robust queries could be formed on the data thanks to the simplicity of Django, a web content, SQL-based management system. So to me, I thought the biggest asset of our online that it provided through Django was this public and private interface for accessing this data. Our online had a good system we wanted to incorporate out of it too, but that's where I started discovering the structural limitations of the system. All it is fairly generic or has the ability to to find different data types, they still required a lot of database restructuring modification to the raw tables in order to add new data types. So if we're talking about archeological objects, they could generically define any kind of archeological object, but that specific data type could not change to say a media. It had to be a separate table of design in the system. <coughs> So, although Alheba and Or Online have a lot of overlapping data types like objects, um, the system wasn't generic enough to incorporate all of Alheba's data without exponentially increasing the code to add more of these generic types. So we needed a solution that can integrate not just these two legacy dates, data sets, but any data set. So this is always the fun part, my crazy database design. I'm gonna go through <laughs> Pretty briefly, and if anyone's interested in more of the mechanics, um, we can talk about it later. It might take too long. So basically, the whole idea of this was to take something that we're familiar with as archaeologists was usually forms. Like, wherever I've seen excavations, we're using some kind of form. Whether it's like a digital form or a paper form, I thought that was a good vocabulary to use when designing the system. And so I kind of designed these entity types, which have these very strange relationships through that fun little spaghetti map of words. So at the top of this hierarchy is a project, which is a way to collect form types um, into one package. So a form type would be the equivalent, equivalent of a traditional database table. Uh, so it's essentially the basic building block of the system. A form, which is a subset of that, it would be the equivalent of a row in a traditional database table. Uh, record attribute types, record reference types represent a column heading in that table. Record attribute values and record reference values would represent the individual cells in that table. Um, so, what does it do and what doesn't it do? We have recently named this toolkit, Tara, as I explained earlier, so that's the question. What does it do? Why does anyone want to use it? There are enough generic relational databases that exist already, especially as repositories and publishing platforms. I didn't want to just design another repository or another publishing system. There's plenty out there to use as it is, like there's no sense in designing something new for the sake of designing something new. Um, so the goal is to get people using the data, like not just storing it somewhere, provide a platform to actually perform some kind of queries and analysis, et cetera. Um, so if it's just sitting somewhere, then like what's the point if we're not using it except for just storing it? So we're not trying to design a new paradigm. We're designing a tool that's already proven useful for us and a tool we think will be useful for other archaeologists and humanity specialists. It's not a replacement for existing systems, although it can be, like we're using it for al to publish it specifically, but this is meant to analyze archaeological data, produce various reports and information that can be used in research. So how have we utilized this system so far, and how will we utilize it to understand our Southern Mesopotamian data? So this slide, which is not too legible on the screen, but that's fine. So this is something that Steve Burnett and I are working on for a ceramic analysis. So this is an example output of querying roughly 150,000 individual ceramic shirts per Alheba. And so it's getting a series of counts essentially based on a stratigraphic context by specific ceramic types. And so he can pull these various charts and graphs that are automatically generated 
to kind of get these like quick glimpses of what's going on the site with ceramics. And this would be an example of cross-project querying. So Ur Online and Alheba's data are both in the system right now. And so you can perform a search function accessing both projects and it'll show you these like stacked views. Of, so this is specifically looking at seals between both sites, like ceilings or cylinder seals. So you can quickly compare like what's going on at those sites. These large blocks are supposed to be more refined graphs, but they are not currently that refined yet. Uh, but they will be. And then the geospatial engine, which is what I have been more kind of excited about. Um, so it's made entirely with open layers and utilizing the existing database structure that I designed. So open layers is a JavaScript library that handles a lot of geospatial information. I think there's one called Leaflet as well. Um, but this one has like a lot of functionality. So this is a lightweight online version of a desktop GIS application. Um, features can be added through GeoJSON, drawn manually, deleted, edited, etc. Right now we can query by symbology classes, number to QGIS or ArcMap. We can do graduated numeric classes, categorical classes, and rules-based classes. We can edit the color ramps, auto-classify, set transparencies, use several layers, etc. The system will look up all fields and relations backwards and forward connected to a geospatial form type or layer in this geospatial engine. So in this specific shot or screenshot of the engine, which this is what it looks like. like so this will be the main screen for anything going on, but just specifically for the geospatial engine, that's what it will look like. Um, this is a <coughs> auto-generated 10 class range for just the numeric easting coordinate of Alheba's 100 meter by 100 meter grid. Which, that old guy over there. So there's also a 10 meter by 10 meter grid, but that is about 70,000 individual features, which takes a long time to load. So the 100 by 100 meter grid is more useful for this thing. But so like just using the easting coordinate, I could also dig deeper into one of the fields and say, look at the distribution by size of diameter of ceramics per grid square, because they have that connected geospatial context. Uh, quickly, the rules, or, sorry, categorical. Uh, this is an auto-generated categorical class for the entire grid based on the grid ID, which I could also switch this to show all grid squares that say contain objects that have cylinder seal as their object type. Uh, and then finally, there's a rules-based class. Uh, it works similarly to the main non-geospatial query engine that was producing the graphs and charts, but it's a little bit more simplified for now. And it's going to be the main geospatial tool we'll be using to do queries across war and all that. Uh, so I would like to thank everyone and hopefully it didn't take too much time. No, good. So yes, uh, the system is online, although it's only accessible. Um, through like passwords, but you can still like go to the site and there's a landing page and stuff like that. If anyone's interested in running anything on it, I could very easily set up the sample project for you to log into yourself to like for importing data and whatnot. Um, so yes, my goal is to finish the public facing front end by the end of the month. So, or sorry, by the end of April. So hopefully by then you can just go to the site and start looking at this actual data. Um, so thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And hopefully I didn't sound bad. <laughs> <laughs>